In this video, I'm going to talk about adding HTML dynamically in JavaScript. And what that can let you do is do things like, instead of having a pop-up showing the information in a sidebar or some other part of your web page, could be anywhere. In this case, we're just using a sidebar. So when I'm clicking on these features, the sidebar is getting updated. And not just the whole sidebar, but it's actually uh, oops, a specific part of the sidebar. So it's one element within the sidebar that is getting updated. There are a couple of things you need to know to get this working. And in order to show that, I'm going to start with a simple web page um, made in Glitch from, I'm just going to start from scratch with this web page. Um, I'm just going to remove all the HTML content and it should be empty. And I'll add um, a little bit of text. Hi, my name is. Um, great. So right now the HTML just says, Hi, my name is. And um, I could put my name here in this span like that, but thinking ahead to when we're getting this data out of a database such as Cardo or somewhere else, some we have this dynamic information that we want to add here. Um, I don't want to put the information directly in here. I want to do that using JavaScript. So. Um, I'm going to give this span a class, and I'll call it name um, indicator or something like that. Something relatively generic. This is where the name is going to go. Okay, Glitch wants me to put it in double quotes. I'll do that. That's fine. So, um, as expected, you just don't see anything in that empty element because there's just nothing in that element to show. Um, in JavaScript, we're going to do something. Uh, we're going to remove the existing JavaScript code. We're going to do two things. We're going to select that element. So I'm going to say var name indicator is equal to document dot um, query selector, and then the class name after a dot, a dot saying I'm selecting by class, name indicator. Great. So um, that didn't do anything. All I did was select that element. And if I open up developer tools and go to the console, I can say name indicator to see that variable click on it, and you'll see that it exists. It is a zero width span right now. Span will not, um, it's not a block element, so it will not take up the entire width of the page. It's just going to take up the width that it needs. In this case, it doesn't need any width because there's no content in there. And um, now that we have a variable that refers to that element on the page, I can do I can set the content of it relatively easily. Um, you say the name of the variable dot inner HTML equal to and then some text. In my case, I could say Eric and hit enter, and I just changed the inner HTML of that element. If I looked at it using the select an element tool, you will see that um, the inner HTML is now set to that string that I gave it. So um, I did not mean to rearrange that. Uh, let's refresh that page. And um, so to do that in the JavaScript, it's exactly the same as in the console there console uh, name indicator dot inner 
HTML is equal to Eric. And this doesn't just have to be this doesn't have to just be text. This could be as much or as little HTML as you want. So um, if I wanted it to be bold, I could put strong around it. Remember, strong in HTML will uh, increase the font weight of the element. I could do other things. I could add images here. I could add links. Um, you can build as much HTML here in the inner HTML as you want or need to. Okay, this isn't actually my site, but you can learn more about me at and link to a, a web page. And you'll see um, the inner HTML is now um, all of these things. From here to here, that's what the JavaScript is setting that to. Okay. And the link works as you would expect it to, because it's all valid HTML. Now, this can get to be a lot to look at in your JavaScript, and there are good arguments to be made for moving anything that looks like HTML into your HTML file. Generally makes it easier to think about, makes it easier to find, when you're thinking about changing the HTML of your page, if all of the HTML-like things are in your HTML. So how could we do this? Um, if we look at the original example that I started this with, you can see that we are updating the sidebar um, using a technique exactly like the one that I just walked through. So in this case, I have a variable that is the sidebar. It's actually the sidebar content, just a small part of the sidebar. When a feature is clicked, I create some HTML, as you can see here. And then I set inner HTML to that content. So I'm creating a string, some text, that represents the HTML that I want to put in the content. If I remix this so that I don't accidentally change um, some code that I don't want to change, I just want to console.log the content so you can see that this is just text. So if I open up developer tools from here and I click on a feature, you'll see um, H3 element with the name Laura, which is what shows up here, and then a div with the price per night, and so on. Okay, So that's all that is happening there. We're getting the data from, um, in this case, we're getting it from Cardo, and we are adding HTML tags around that data. And then we create a string that is those HTML tags and the data put together, and we set the inner HTML to that. This is fine. Um, it works OK. If I had a more complex sidebar where, say, I wanted to add links, wanted to add some styles, wanted to um, just show more information, this gets cumbersome really quickly. And what I would recommend at this point is using a JavaScript library called Mustache. So Mustache, uh, it's called Mustache because it uses a lot of curly braces. If you've used things like Cardo, um, Mustache is used there. And the nice thing about Cardo, um, about Mustache rather, is that, um, so I have this example, pop-ups using Mustache. Um, the nice thing is what you can do is create a template 
and you can put it in your HTML. I put this template in a script tag like this. Mostly I'm putting it in a script tag so that the browser will not display it. I don't want the browser to show this pop-up template on the page until I'm ready for it to. So it just stores it in there. Um, you see here in Glitch, I'm losing some of the fancy styling that I would expect usually in HTML, um, and that's that's too bad. But um, it's much better than having it in JavaScript. If you look at it in JavaScript, remember you're surrounding the HTML tags in quotation marks. You're using plus signs a bunch. Um, it gets it's just a lot less to look at in a template. And you can kind of, um, you can more easily see what this is doing. And um, if I run this app, you should see that it looks, um, okay, so this is using pop-ups instead of a sidebar, but otherwise it looks pretty much the same. We're still showing the name of the person hosting this Airbnb and what the price is. And if I change something here, like I wanted to say dollars per night, I can just change the template here in the HTML. And now when I click on a pop-up, you see that it is updated there. Okay, so looking at the JavaScript, it's mostly just setting up Leaflet, setting up Cardo, adding our data to it. Um, you see when I create the layer, I'm specifying feature click columns. This is a Cardo thing. This is so that I have all of these columns available in my pop-up. And then when a feature is clicked, I can, um, I can log out the data. So if I open up the developer tools and look in the console, I should see a bunch of things getting logged out. Um, so it's definitely more than just uh, what we're showing right now. Not just host name and price, but there's the room type, the neighborhood, and so on. So, um, so we have all of that data. And the way mustache works is right here. This is all the mustache code that we're using. And we're saying mustache.render the pop-up template, which is the template from the HTML. And the second parameter is the context. So this is the actual data that we're going to insert into the template. In this case, we're just passing it all of the data that Cardo gave us. And where did this pop-up template come from? This is a variable. Let's look for that. Ah, okay, it's up here on line 12. You can see it because it's highlighted here. We are selecting the pop-up template from the HTML, getting the inner HTML from it. And that gives us a string that is the template that we will fill in. Okay. So now, um, one really nice thing about this is I can change my pop-ups without touching any JavaScript. And the less often you're touching the JavaScript, less likely you are to make some mistakes. So if I wanted to add the neighborhood, I can, um, I can refer to here to see what the columns are, or I can refer to the console. And maybe I want to add the neighborhood, then the borough, because we're in New York. So in the HTML, maybe I'll add another div and say in curly braces, the name of the column, comma, curly braces, the uh, back in the JavaScript, the borough. I think I mixed these up. Okay, so now that I now when I click on a feature, you can see instead of those curly braces, 
we have the actual content from that feature. And I can dig into the feature in my console and see, okay, Bedford Stuyvesant, that's neighborhood one, uh, neighbor H, neighborhood, uh, that's Brooklyn in this case. If I click somewhere in Queens, we should see something else. Um, and that is a really big benefit to um, using templates to make your HTML. Um, if I, oh, my HTML wasn't quite valid here. I need to close the div tag. And same goes for things like the linking to the feature. So in this case, there's a room URL. I could say href equals, and then in quotes, the room URL. View on Airbnb. And then, um, so these URLs might not be current because the data is a bit old, so it might not work. But that's the idea, right? So you can add as much HTML in here as you want. Things in the double curly braces get replaced by mustache, assuming that the data exists here in the context data that you pass to it. If I pick something that is not here, like pet friendly. I don't see pet friendly here. I can put that in my pop-up if I want to. Uh, I'll say is pet friendly. And then in curly braces pet friendly. This is not going to do anything because um, this data does not exist in the object that we're passing to mustache. Uh, so it's just going to say is pet friendly there's no data to put there, so it's just empty. Okay. So if you're doing this and you end up with blank spaces in your HTML where you expected to see more, that might be part of it. Okay. So I'm going to remove that. Um, another thing is that now that we're creating the HTML in here, it's a little bit easier to say add a class and say uh, pop-up header, right? And now I can go into my CSS and I can style, it's a class, so I'm using a period, pop-up header. Uh, let's make the font size uh, a bit larger, for example, way bigger, um, and maybe remove the margin something like that, right? So this is not ideal, but hopefully it gives you an idea um, that now that I have this um, this template here, I, it's much more straightforward to add classes to elements than in here. If I wanted to add a class here, I can do it. I can say class equals pop-up header as before. Um, but I find personally that having quotation marks within quotation marks like this gets confusing very quickly. So I prefer to do that, if at all possible, in the HTML itself.